when you do it wrong. All right. If you Very cool. Yeah, oh, I need to mute this stuff. That's enough out of you. Back to what we were doing here. Down. Ain't no cam. Working on my... Did I spring it to life yet? Options, uh, lighting. Let's reset the lights. Let's turn the lights up. Warp shell. Smash the old build button. Wait for it to build itself up. Okay, well, it's cool. Blue light sphere. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my map. I'm going to pull this piece out and then put this blue light sphere underneath it like so, or just on top of it. Kind of what I'm shooting for. Shoot over to GIMP. And we take a peek at what GIMP has to offer us. Wow, why is my... Um, Oh, so gigantically juicy. Being my way back out of this, I was working on this cannon. The cannon is now officially in game. <gasps> on too far. Do, 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 do. That's a song, I'm pretty sure, somewhere. Warp shell, upper decker. There we go. It's not in place. Fantastic. That's always great when that happens. Corner and make sure by pixel that she's on par. This layer below the other layer. It's down. Off by a little bit. Cool, that's better. Variation in what's what. So this is my this is my outline of the walls of the ship that are going to give me with this image on the tabletop as the base. The walls will give it some three D separation of the rooms. This just makes it look like the ship is floating in space, so we don't need to have that on. Walls kind of go over top. Now, I already st spent some time cutting this cannon out, adding a little bit of blue dots to this, and then putting an, an, an orange purple light onto cannon. You can see over here, cannon's got some depth to it. It's got a little orange glow. I've also added swirly bits and some lightning and red globe going on over there. I think what I want to do is cut out these three, these three pieces here. Let's do that because it's going to be nice and simple. That'll make this quick. So if I go to my GIMP and on my GIMP, shoot over here. These are nice and easy to do because they are different contrasts so well. Choose this. See, like basically one click, we've got them all. On the right layer, layers, add a transparency. Looks like it's done, so I should be able to delete that away. Now, I think I can tighten that up a little bit by going over 30. Then hitting delete. I think that's tighter. Day to not select anything. And then from here, we're going to go shift E. We're just going to get rid of this. Oh, I need my, my, my blonde proper delete everything brush. That piece 
piece because I don't really think it's going to make that much of a, a difference inside tabletop simulator. Let's size down, zoom in and get rid of this handle. It's not going to, it's not going to do a thing inside tabletop simulator. Enough pixels there for it to have any substance. Now that we're here, uh, we are going to grab our fuzzy select tool, select everything and click on this. And then we're right back to doing the old usual. So we're going to shrink it down probably by two pixels. Um, grab my paintbrush, and choose black. Size of, oops, of my brush. Line that. Control I again, select. We want to grow two pixels. Shift E is going to. Control I. Shift E is going to take us to my eraser. Now I have a nice outlined piece. Layer, and we want. Action. Oh, Control Z. Hey, sometimes, sometimes it's just best to start over. Layer, crop to selection. Image, selection. That's the only piece I want is that piece. We are going to export this as, I'm going to call these things like fuel tanks. It's essentially what they look like. And then I'm going to take the fuel tanks exported as PNG and I'm going to drop them into an Imgur account that I have created. I've created a hidden folder and I'm just putting these images in there so that I can copy the image address. Then I don't have to have my computer up there on the internet. Copy image address. Back to camera for the tabletop simulator. And we are just going to go to objects, components. It for this somewhere control V I want these to be a full inch because I feel like they're probably like a big tank flip them around so they're rotated the right way let's just drop them there and that yeah we're just eyeballing it Zabada ding. Okay, so blue light, come here. Let's lock that in place. Hit a right click. Choose the looping effect. So I'm just setting this to like six inches. You lock this in place. F8. Look at the rotation on this thing. See how this rotation is like absolutely bananas? That's because the rotation here is absolutely bananas. We have like three completely random weird numbers. Select off of it and we, we go back to it. Now you'll see they're straight up and down. So I can easily just grab this green one and sink it right into the table. With that done, let's, or, you know, now that we're at this stage of the game, come on. Let's go to toggles and turn off the tool tip. Then we're gonna grab the green deal and we're just gonna press this down Low a little bit. Also, if I can get a hold of it, I should, let's try this 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. That's just a tiny little object, even though the glow doesn't, that won't change the glow. There, check that out. So now this becomes really noticeable. I got something I want to try here. Saved objects. Let's check out tools, light bar. Interesting thing that I found the other day. Let's pop it down here amongst the other deals. Grids on the map. Flip me token. I think this is made by Tattletail. Usually the two big guys that make a lot of stuff on 
tabletop simulator that make really cool stuff for Mr. Stump. And then this this one world is made by this guy Tattletale. Oh my god, this is the, such a game changer for for doing this kind of a deal. Um you'll notice like let's let's skip through this. Bing bing bing. If I go to objects, no, options and grid and I show lines. Okay. See how the lines are on the bottom? You don't see the lines on top. Let's say I was running a city village, back alley, something like that, and we were doing a rooftop chase. None of the lines on the grid would be projected or get projected onto the rooftop. So if I turn the options off, and I, or I turn grids off, and I use this thing called Flip Me, if you flip it over, it has hexes. You can click it multiple times to change the size of the hexes. Or you can have squares. Set your grid size. Now what I like about this is that it automatically puts the grids over top of. It casts a shadow down on the table of grids, <clears throat> which is super fantastic. Doing rooftop adventures and whatnot. Now there is there is a way that you can right click on say like a piece like this and under toggle you can have it so that uh, grid protection should this object receive grid lines projected onto it could turn that on turn this off but then you're now you're you're messing with every piece that needs to have grids projected onto it there not, not a you know it's not too shabby I like playing without grids so Anyways, options, options. You, you got options. Grids are necessary. Probably not a bad size grid for, for this. It actually lines up pretty sweetly with the middle. And it almost is the size of a person that would walk up or down this thing. So just depending on how big the ship is. Or you want it to be. Um, okay, where was I? The light bar. So we want to go to dark. One click of the button, gloom and doom. The room is now dim. Check that out. The nice blue glow off of these tanks. I've got uh, the yellow light coming off of these fuel cells back here, illuminating this back engine room. Got the cool purple light on the side of this cannon. I'm gonna put some, probably put some blue up in here and some blue in this room as well. So I get the pieces cut out. It'd be nice if I could adjust the, or choose the color. Get a cool tur turquoise or something like that for up in here, like a blue-green kind of a deal. Slick. Um, options, uh, lighting. Back here, and you can go demo normal. Slowly raises the lights. And you can add your own custom Custom colors to it somehow. I'm going to have to look into that. I'm sure you can like get rid of it by doing this, or you can just add more in, or it adds more in. You can script it. Lighting preset saved. There it goes. So that's how you do it. <laughs> I, I found it out by accident. You just change the lights by going into options. Let's go into lighting, and you want to go to, let's say, change the light color to... Let's choose like a straight up orange suiting density. Darken it down a little bit. Now we've got ourselves like a cool orange looking light scheme that sort of matches the tabletop a little bit because of the orange from outside. You can just go and uh, you can hit save. Add name. Add a name. Add a name for this save to the tools context menu. Okay, so to save, here we go. 
Light bar. That's just poo. Let's try something out here while we're goofing around. Options, uh, options, options, uh, lighting. Uh, let's change the color to back to orange like it was. Turn the intensity of this room up. Leave it like that. And then down here, we are going to call this orange death. Right, and then I'm going to hit save. Ah, ha, ha, look at that. Back to normal. Or how about some orange death? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Very red. Woot, woot, woot. Code red. Full alert. So cool. Super cool. Excuse me there. Sniffing in anybody's ear. All right, so I'm going to work together, uh, piece this together a little bit more. Uh, we'll see what happens when I get a finished product. Stuff some things in here. Cool. Peace out.